King of glory comes, a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. Who is the King of glory? How shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of ages. The King of glory comes, a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In all of Galilee, in city or village, he goes among his people curing their illness. The King of glory comes, a nation rejoices. Open the gates before him, lift up your voices. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the grace and peace of God our Father, the love of the Lord Jesus Christ, his Son, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. We gather together on this special Sunday, this third Sunday of Advent. The priest, as you can see, is wearing pink vestments. I'll explain that a little bit more in my homily as to why we do that. Every day of our lives is special. Every day of our life, we're given opportunity to be people who extend forgiveness and who receive forgiveness. In a moment of silence now, we call to mind our sins, and we ask God for pardon of our sins. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come again with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who see how your people faithfully await the feast of the Lord's Nativity, enable us, we pray, to attain the joys of so great a salvation and to celebrate them always with solemn worship and glad rejoicing. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring glad tidings to the poor, to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to announce a year of favor from the Lord and a day of vindication by our God. I rejoice heartily in the Lord. In my God is the joy of my soul, for he has clothed me with a robe of salvation and wrapped me in a mantle of justice like a bridegroom adorned with a diadem, like a bride bedecked with her jewels. As the earth brings forth its plants and a garden makes its growth spring up, so will the Lord God make justice and praise spring up before all the nations. The word of the Lord. Thank Thanks be to God. soul rejoices in my God. My soul rejoices in my God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked upon his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. My soul rejoices in my God. 
has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel, for he has remembered promise of mercy. I saw rejoices in my God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In all circumstances, give thanks, for this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not despise prophetic utterances. Test everything. Retain what is good. Refrain from every kind of evil. May the God of peace make you perfectly holy, and may you entirely, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will also accomplish it. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. sent from God, he came for testimony to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to testify to the light. And this is the testimony of John. When the Jews from Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to him to ask him, who are you? He admitted and did not deny it, but admitted, I am not the Christ. So they asked him, what are you then? Are you Elijah? And he said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. So they said to him, who are you so we can give an answer to those who sent us? What do you have to say for yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the desert, make straight the way of the Lord, as Isaiah the prophet said. Some Pharisees were also sent. They asked him, Why then do you baptize if you are not Christ, or Elijah, or the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but there is one among you whom you do not recognize, the one who is coming after me, whose sandal strap I am not worthy to untie. This happened in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
So why the pink vestments? It's actually supposed to be considered a dusty rose colored vestment. And in my first parish, it was a neon pink vestment that I wore on this Sunday and the first Lent I celebrated the fourth Sunday of Lent. One is called Gaudate Sunday, namely today, the other Laetare Sunday. And it has to do from the Latin translation of the entrance antiphon for the Mass. Today's would be Gaudate in Domino Semper. Rejoice in the Lord always. Maybe the word semper is familiar. Many Marines have on their cars semper fi, or semper, it's an abbreviation of the word fidelis. Semper fidelis means always faithful. Gaudate semper means always rejoice. We wear purple during the season of Advent and Lent. It's a penitential color, can also be seen as a color of royalty within the church. But Lent and Advent were at one point in the life of the church very, very similar. They were both penitential times, time to sort of focus on how you're maybe not living up to what the gospel asks us to do. But there was a feeling that even within that time, we had to remember Jesus Christ came, he suffered and died on the cross, he rose from the dead, he promised us eternal life, and that's what we're baptized into, the eternal life with Christ. So we should have a moment of joy in our season of Advent, and a moment of joy in our season of Lent. The Holy Father on this day, for many centuries, would go out to a crowd of people and hand one person a red rose symbolic of receiving the joy that Christ brings to us. Our season of Advent prepares us for the birth of Christ. It brings great joy to us. It brings great joy to children who wait Santa Claus to come and bring them gifts if they've been good this year. But in terms of faith, as we lead up to Advent, we hear about those who prepared for the coming of Jesus. During our season of Advent, we celebrate, for instance, this past Tuesday, the Feast of the Immaculate Conception, and we remember the role Mary had. The Feast of the Immaculate Conception is about Mary being carried in her mother and God giving her the blessing of being without sin. And that way she was able to receive the angel Gabriel's greeting when she was told she would carry the Savior of the world. And John the Baptist is another figure who plays predominantly in the life of Christ, maybe not as a child, although he did recognize him when he was in his mother's womb and leapt for joy when Mary came into the house. But it's also here, just as Jesus is about to begin his public ministry, we have him out in the desert. We heard last week about him baptizing, sort of this wild character in camel hair and eating locusts and honey. And to most people, maybe you'd consider him sort of a lunatic. He was by himself. But he certainly raised the eyebrows of those who were in authority. Why are people going to the Jordan River to be baptized by this guy? We don't allow this sacrament of baptism. Don't think of it as, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the Son of the Holy Spirit. That hasn't come yet. It says that John's baptism was a penance. You, you paid for repentance of your sin through the act of the baptism. But for those who were in the temple, they relied on people coming in, purchasing animals, and having the animal sacrifices to forgive their sins. Not this baptismal thing that John is talking about. And as I said, even though he's sort of this wild character, they want to know who he is. They want to know, for instance, is he Elijah? Now, Elijah was the Old Testament prophet 
who we have no account of him dying, but being carried off by a chariot of fire. What a wonderful moment for a Hollywood movie, someone being carried off by a chariot of fire into the universe with a promise to come back as the Messiah is here. Jesus is already alive. Jesus already has some people following him. That's why John in the Gospel said, there is one among you whom you do not recognize. I'm not even unworthy to unfasten his sandals. Amazing, amazing things from a man who has all these people flocking out to him. Josephus, who wrote about the extremely early part of the church, said that when he was in Jerusalem, there was still sort of like a church to John the Baptist. There were still people following John the Baptist's teachings. But he was always about preparing the way for Jesus. There was a movie many years ago called Pay It Forward. It's really become sort of a thing many, many people do today. If you remember the story of the movie, the sort of emotionally scarred teacher of social studies challenges the kids to think of something to do that would bring good to the world and then to go ahead and accomplish it. And this kid thinks in his mind about paying it forward and through his actions tries to bring together his mother who is in emotional trouble as well along with the teacher and he also tries to help someone that's being bullied. That's the way he pays it forward. John the Baptist will pay it forward by his very own life. He's teaching that we have to confess our sins, and when Herod has him arrested, because John the Baptist is telling Herod he shouldn't be married to his brother's wife, he doesn't back down. He continues to pay it forward. And he tells his own followers, Jesus is the Christ, he's the Messiah, follow him. So in many ways, he's paying it forward. I saw an article, and as I read through it, I thought maybe during our Advent season, it's a wonderful time to practice paying it forward. And maybe it will change the world around us because it certainly can change our very lives. When you pay it forward, you're usually changing someone else's circumstances for the better. Sometimes you're saving another's life without even realizing it. Paying it forward inspires generosity and compassion. All too often, we think too much about our own needs without considering how our behavior affects others. What we say and do matters. Ultimately, the person paying it forward grows as much as the person receiving the act of kindness. Paying it forward alters our cultural identity. We affect the climate of our three main realms, home life, the workplace, and sociable places. People who act more altruistically in all phases of their lives make the world more bearable. Paying it forward introduces you to new people <clears throat> who might enrich your life, both emotionally and financially. People you would never meet under different circumstances sometimes become pivotal players in your life. By paying it forward, you practice credibility and accountability by considering others' need. This carries over into everything you do. You feel better about yourself because you're trying to make everyone else's lives better. Others trust you more readily and take you into their confidence when they see you paying it forward. They respect you more because they have left reason to, less reason to doubt you. Paying it forward erases ego. It's all about us living together and sharing the moment. This takes a little courage. We have to accept who we are in this vast expanse. There's no point in just standing at the edge of the ocean and sticking your toe in the water. Paying it forward is when you dive in and surf with the dolphins. Paying it forward is also self-affirming. Granted, pure altruism doesn't exist in the sense 
that we act on our own behalf even when we do good deeds of others, but so what? We are still performing kindly acts. You grow creatively by paying it forward on a regular basis. Helping others requires imagination. Moreover, there's no telling what those you help are thinking. They're studying formative, unexpected moments that reconfigures their life narratives. Paying it forward becomes an essential part of your critical thinking process, and this extends to future generations. If you have children, they'll see this in you and carry the same tradition forward. They'll be more rational, humane creatures. We live in a world where maybe we need to become more rational, more humane creatures towards ourselves and towards one another. The gospel message invites us, but challenges us to honor the great commandment, love of God and love of neighbor. During this time of Advent, at this critical time in the life of our world with the pandemic of COVID-19, maybe we need to be more creative in the ways we are able to pay it forward. But all the benefits, all the things that about us need to be changed can change if we focus not on ourselves, but on the needs of others. That's what truly helps us to grow. That's what Christ did, he who was sinless, as he was up there on the cross. That's what Christ did at the Last Supper. He said, this is for you. He didn't say, this is for me. So in your prayers this week, please remember others. Please try to help others, and please remember that God loves us all. May we join in professing our faith in the words of our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became men. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, for the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our Lord hears us, we present to him now our prayers of intercession. for the members of the body of Christ, the church, for effective preaching and compelling witness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For government leaders, for judges and legislators, for keen insight, clear judgment, and concern for the common good, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For bold prophets and humble listeners, for those whose lives witness the gospel of God, Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For all who minister to the sick, for healing in body and spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those whose death draws near, for courage, strength, and true compassion, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For this community of faith, the body of Christ in this time and place, for generous hearts sensitive to the needs of neighbors, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Let us in, remember in prayer the souls of the recently departed 
especially those who have been affected by the coronavirus. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And for Harry and Corinne Rosen, Camilla Chevry, Ryan Force, Rita Morrison, Sarah Josephine, and D. Leo Donovan, for whom this Mass is offered today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, our, hear our, prayer. our prayer. Heavenly Father, with confidence, we bring you our prayers. We ask that you hear them and grant them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, come to us, lead us to your light. Jesus, be with us, for we need you. Lord, we come before you, listen to our prayer, fill us all with hope and your love. Jesus, come to us, lead us to Dear friends, pray that my sacrifice and yours will be found pleasing and acceptable to God, who is our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all the church. church. Amen. May the sacrifice of our worship, Lord, we pray, be offered to you unceasingly to complete what was begun in sacred mystery and powerfully accomplish for us your saving work through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For all the oracles of the prophets foretold him. The Virgin Mother longed for him with love beyond all telling. John the Baptist sang of his coming and proclaimed his presence when he came. It is by his gift that already we rejoice at the mystery of his nativity, so that he may find us watchful in prayer and exultant in his praise. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy and to be glorified, O God, who love the human race and who always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son, present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. 
And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scripture and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured forth for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again. We offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love, we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. And so, having called us to your table, Lord, confirm us in unity, so that together with Francis our Pope and Sean our Bishop, with all bishops, priests, and deacons, and your entire people, as we walk your ways with faith and hope, we may strive to bring joy and trust into the world. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us, when our earthly pilgrimage is done, that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, our spouse, with the apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. 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 At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but upon the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Mercy, O 
the Lamb of God, behold, he who takes away the sin of the world and promises eternal life. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not Lord, worthy that you, that you should, should enter under my roof, but only say, but only the, say word, the word, and my soul and shall, be shall be Let us pray. We implore your mercy, Lord, that this divine assistance, substance may cleanse us of our faults and prepare us for the coming feasts 
Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Patience, people, till the Lord is come. Patience, people, till the Lord is come. See, the farmer awaits the yield of the soil. He watches it in winter and in spring rain. Patience, people, till the Lord is come. You have seen the purpose of the Lord. You know of his compassion and his mercy. Patience, people, till the Lord is come. Steady your heart, for the Lord is close at hand. And do not grumble one against the other. Patience, people, till the Lord is come. Patience, people, for the Lord is come.